Hi, I'm Jody Guerra with Excelsior Classes, and this is Book Banter, a video blog in which we tell you what you should be reading next. For this installment, we will be discussing animal stories for younger readers. Yay! Now, animal stories for younger readers, that sometimes can be a tall order, right? I mean, how many of us remember the ending of Old Yeller and how scarring that was? Or perhaps Charlotte's Web and how that was? Or Where the Red Fern Grows and how that one was, right? A lot of times the animal stories for younger kids don't end well. Well, I have some that do end well. And so I want to just give you three books that I think are great reads for younger readers. And the first one is this. It's called Zarafa. The subtitle of this book is The Giraffe Who Walked to the King. Now, this particular title will also be tied into one that I recommend for um, high school and adult readers in a different installment of Book Banter. But this one is the same story, but for younger readers. Zarafa was a gift, a giraffe who was a gift from an Ottoman ruler to the king of France. So Zarafa travels all the way to Marseille, France, aboard a ship. And then from Marseille, she walks all the way to the king. This is a really delightful story. It's so sweet. Um, the pictures in this book are just wonderful. So certainly an older elementary reader could read this um, on their own or on his or her own. Um, it's a great one to have older children read to younger children. Just a really swell story. Okay, another, another book that doesn't end in a bad way. And again, Zarafa, nothing bad happens to Zarafa, so that's a good thing. Another one, and this one's about a dog. It's called Big Red by Jim Kelgard. Did any of you happen to read this? I loved this book when I was, um, you know, younger. I think I first read it in junior high, and it's about an Irish setter and um, uh, a young boy. It's really told, you know, from the young boy's uh, perspective. He's the the main character in the book. But oh my goodness, so good! I just really wanted an Irish setter after having read this book. Um, it, it's it's full of adventure, um, but again nothing bad happens at the end of the book. And so that that's always a good thing. I just really think that Jim Kelgard has a gift for language. This would be a stretch read for some kids because his vocabulary, some of it is rather um, uh, difficult, that maybe some unfamiliar words, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. So again, Jim Kelgard, he does have a series of books about, you know, Iris Setters, but I believe this is the first one. It's the one that I love the best. And finally, my last recommendation is just pure silliness. It is just pure silliness. Okay, here it is. I could pee on this and other poems by cats. I know that's so ridiculous, but it is a funny, funny little book. And I really think that kids, you know, kids in bathroom humor and kids with animals, this book's poems are just so relatable to children. This book was written by Francesco Marcelliano. And it's just a series of silly short poems supposedly written by cats for owners. And so I'm going to read just one of them. This one's called, This is My Chair. This is my chair. This is my couch. This is my bed. This is my bench. That is my chase. There is my settee. Those are my footstools. Those are my rugs. Everywhere is my place to sleep. Perhaps you should just get a hotel room. I mean, if you've ever owned a cat, you will be able to relate to the poems in this silly little slim volume. But I'll tell you why I'm recommending this for younger readers. I think that the younger that you are able to start students or children reading poetry, you make it a non-scary thing. You make it so that it's accessible and that they learn to enjoy language and the play of language. So um, if you read just, you know, silly poems like this, haikus, Robert Louis Stevenson has delightful poems for, for children. You make it something that is familiar to them. 
So they're not waiting until junior high or high school to get, you know, in their face with poetry and think, oh, I can't do this. They'll have a firm foundation and it will be something that is familiar and non-threatening. So anyway, those are my three recommendations about animal stories for younger readers. I have another installment for older kids and adults coming up soon. Thank you so much. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe. Bye-bye.